Action, said Mark Twain, speaks louder than words. Throughout Minnesota's history, there have been people and organizations with good intentions and strong messages. Why have some flourished while others faded? To borrow from Benjamin Franklin, perhaps fortune smiles most on those who make their own success. Such is the story of the Midwest Minnesota Community Development Corporation, an organization with beginnings far away that has left an indelible mark right here at home. And you look back at uh, uh, at the accomplishments uh, of MMCDC and what it does represent now and what it what it can do. It's, very, it's just it's amazing. As with all good stories, MMCDC's history is filled with good people. People like President John F. Kennedy, who began his war on poverty in 1963. Lyndon Johnson continued his work, and the resulting Economic Opportunity Act of 1964 created community action programs. Mojave Community Council of Detroit Lakes was soon born. Del Hultgren, executive director of Mojave, oversaw the subsequent creation of a CDC in order to broaden Mojave's scope and the creation of a vehicle for rural economic development. However, funding proved challenging, so Hultgren turned to Congressman Odin Langan. Langan, in turn, sought the help of Minnesota's Senator Hubert Humphrey and New York Senator Jacob Javits. The resulting CDC was the last created in 1971. Shortly thereafter, the MMCDC was created as a separate corporation, and the area expanded to include Clearwater, Pennington, Red Lake, East Polk, and the White Earth Reservation. Doris Kohler remembers these early years well. She started in 1972, and even acted as interim director on more than one occasion. She recalls the rigidity of early MMCDC projects. Our grant stipulated what we were to do. I mean, we, were, we had X number of dollars for venture development, we had X number of dollars for administration, and so we knew what, what we were to do. Seeking out those dollars became a constant struggle and a defining element of the next 15 tumultuous years. Directors came and went, board members changed, and so did office locations. Government oversight was passed around Washington. Kohler recalls that in 1974, another important person in MMCDC's history, Charlie Mumford, MMCDC's longtime federal business analyst, set down 16 special conditions that the organization would have to meet in order to continue. In that time period, um, we had 16 special conditions that we had to, to fulfill, and um, that was really important. And we, I think that was the biggest challenge, because at that point, we were very close to being dissolved. If we hadn't, if we hadn't accomplished half of those things in that time period, the doors would have been closed. MMCDC's doors did not close. Instead, the organization persevered, and by the early 1980s sought to free itself from dependency on federal dollars. Even when I was first on the board, the federal government paid for all of our administrative overhead. And when that money started to dry up, that certainly was a real challenge. Arlen Kangas became MMCDC's Vice President of Business Development in 1986 and President in 1988. When he first came on, um, you know, it was kind of a pull and a tug between. I, I convinced him that he should be the president, and he thought that I should be. And I said, no, I don't want it, <laughs> that you should be. And um, he said, well, I've never had any administrative um, experience at all. And I said, well, you're going to get it here. <laughs> Overcoming challenges is something I'd like to give credit to board members for, uh, but frankly, I'd go back to staff. With Kangas on board, MMCDC began to invest in important new projects, including the construction of affordable housing and even a CDC-owned bank, something virtually unheard of at that point. He uh, found a, a way to tap into uh, some loan programs, some guaranteed lo loan programs that were the uh, beginning of of our success as a, at, at MMCDC. As the MMCDC became self-sufficient, it also gained new political allies, such as Congressman Colin Peterson and Senator Norm Coleman. 
The MMCDC put its newfound flexibility and resources to good use. When we first began, we had one funding agent, which was OEO. Today, a bit Ireland has five, six, seven of them. MMCDC certainly has, has changed individual communities, and when you just taking Detroit Lakes as the example, uh, it certainly has, has changed the downtown area. In Detroit Lakes, this building we're sitting in, the Greystone, uh, has been rehabbed in a way I think that only the MMCDC could do. MMCDC not only revived the Greystone Hotel, they rebuilt the entire Greystone block. Other success stories include the $7.79 million White Earth Spirit Center in Bemidji, $19 million in low-cost loan funds for multi-purpose facilities in Crookston and Duluth, and utilizing $7.8 million of its new market's tax credit allocation to build a 155-room hotel to help revitalize Minneapolis's historic mill district. Today, the MMCDC provides commercial and home loans to boost economic development in low-income communities across Minnesota. Despite the challenges it has overcome, 40 years later, MMCDC is stronger than ever. MMCDC is also proud to announce, starting in 2011, it has partnered with NeighborWorks America, the country's preeminent leader in affordable housing and community development. Congratulations, MMCDC. Congratulations, MMCDC. I'm glad, glad to be part of your success. I'm proud to have been part of your success. A list of all those responsible for the success of MMCDC would be far too long to present. However, here are just a few of the other important people who have made their mark through their work with the Midwest Minnesota Community Development Corporation.